Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Check the barricade. <coughs> Help them, Granny. <coughs> How dare them politicians accuse me of creating smog? <laughs> <laughs> That's Sam Hill. Well, this wasn't here when I left this morning. Drop your gun and reach for the sky. <laughs> Drop it and reach. <laughs> You tell me what's going on here. Give the password. Tarnation, Granny. I... That ain't it. <laughs> Enough of this foolishness. Well, I had to make sure you weren't the enemy in disguise. When you're feuding, you can't be too careful. Feuding? With who? With the Beverly Hills smog goomers. And I didn't start it either. Here, read that. You are hereby notified. It says when I make soap and my kittle out back, that I am creating a smog hazard. You will immediately see... It so says if I don't stop making soap, I'm going to get arrested by the smog commissioner. The violation of the... When above. the Beverly Hills say I can't make soap, then I say it's time to fight. <laughs> well, ain't you going to read it? Yeah, when my eyeballs stop bouncing. <laughs> Jed, don't tear it down. <laughs> Talking, not shooting, is a way to settle these things. Jed, we can't let them stop me making soap. Well, I aim to see about that. Now, you tell Jethro to come out here and help me take this down. He can't. He's busy making a feud. Granny, have you got that boy all steamed up thinking there's going to be a feud? I can't remember whether I mentioned it to him or not. <laughs> I did mention it to him. <laughs> but, Jay, the right to make soap is one of the four freedoms, and we can't let it get trumped on. Granny, there ain't gonna be no feud. You just trumped on another one. <laughs> hey, boy, lift this up. I can't. What do you mean you can't? <laughs> Fooled you. Take a look. I got levers hooked up to the shifts and the pedals so that I can drive and shoot from in here. What do you do about steering? Oh, this here's a tank of them, Jed. It ain't got none of them luxury extras. Come on out of there, boy. Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. As soon as I find the opening. Jed, if I can't cook up my homemade life soap, I'd just as soon die. Granny, I told you I was going to talk to somebody. Jethro? Uncle Jed? What is it, boy? The steering weren't the only luxury extra I forgot. What was the other one? The door. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, sir. I, <laughs> I'm sure. Well, I'll go around back and fetch you a crowbar. And uh, Jed, we don't need no tank. Just one look at my shotgun and that smog commissioner will back right off. Granny, go out in the kitchen and get you a nice cool glass of buttermilk. There ain't gonna be no feuding. <laughs> Granny, whilst I'm waiting, I'd sure like a cold glass of that buttermilk. Of course, I'm going to need an extra long straw. <laughs> Looks like a barricade, Commissioner. Yes, when Mrs. Drysdale filed the complaint, she warned me to expect anything. 
I'd better handle the inspection. Uh, no, 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 no. You, you, you know, there's an election coming up, and I'd better do a couple of these myself. <laughs> Rough one, it's uh, 402. I know. Open wood fire with acrid fumes. <laughs> well, I'm going out in it. <laughs> Good, Mr. Commissioner. Don't be a hero. <laughs> Everybody knows the talking comes after the fighting, not before. <laughs> Smoggumers. Uh, you might need this fire extinguisher. Thank you. And, uh, Commissioner, good luck. <laughs> That's the ugliest varmint I ever did see. Where's the shack? Mr. Clampett? Looks like things has got out of hand. We better get right down and talk to Mr. Drysdale. Margaret, what do you mean Tinsley's gonna stop the Clampets from making soap? I thought you contributed $500 to his re-election campaign. That's why he's doing it. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, get this jerk Tinsley on the phone for me. And when I stop him, I'll be home and talk to you. The chief. Don't cheat me. Get him on the phone. Why, that cheap, double-crossing, two-bit ward healer. B -b -b chief. Show me this, Commissioner Tinsley, and I'll show you a fathead. I'm Commissioner Tinsley. <laughs> I'm a fathead. <laughs> What's that? Oh, uh, Miss Hathaway was just showing me how well you'd look in a mustache. <laughs> Quite coming. <laughs> Erase this, Miss Hathaway. I'll come right to the point. I understand J.D. Clampett is a client of yours. He certainly is. Oh, I, I just remembered. I have here a uh, $600 contribution for your re-election campaign. Well, well, now that's very public-spirited of you, Mr. Drysdale. Thank you very much. That's my pleasure. <laughs> now, I'm sure you want to forget all about the Clampets and this silly soap-making. Yeah. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> What? Not only are they contributing to smog, but just a short time ago, I got chased from their house at gunpoint, threatened with a crowbar, and grabbed by their pet gorilla. Well, I admit they're not much at entertaining. Listen, Drysdale, if these people don't cease all burning immediately and destroy their soap-making apparatus, I'll make sure they're thrown into jail. Wait a minute, Commissioner. That's all I got to say. Goodbye. What, 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 what about my contribution? Oh, say thank you again. <laughs> Are here. Yes, there ain't no time to sit around and jaw. We gotta commence the attack. I'm sorry to cause all this ruckus, but Granny here is about to start a feud with the whole county of Beverly Hills. What? what? They may have us outnumbered, but we got a cause. The right to make soap. Now, wait. If you'll just give me a chance to see the commissioner again and bribe... Uh, I mean, discuss this. <laughs> sure. Mr. Drysdale, nobody hates feuding worse than I do. I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't have no truck with me. I don't know what to do. He'll if our shotguns do the talking. <laughs> Granny, Mr. Clampett, if I may interpose a note of reason, in a democratic society, there are established ways to redress our grievances with public officials. I already gave him $600. <laughs> referring to the ballot box. <laughs> Mr. Tinsley is running for re-election. I suggest you participate in the campaign and attempt to defeat him on election day. You mean me run for small commissioner? Well, actually, I meant... To we know what you meant. It's Mr. Clampett's civic duty to run. And it's certainly better than feuding, isn't it, Miss Hathaway? Well, it ain't better, but at least it's some kind of a fight. Hold on now. Uh, I appreciate the thought, but an uh, old stump kicker like me couldn't win no election. Oh, nonsense. Even if you don't win, you'll have gotten your issue before the people. Yes, the right to make soap. <laughs> 
That's dry, though. I don't think I owe it. All right, then. Let's go home and gather up all the guns and dynamite we can find. I don't need an election to get Tinsley out of office. I'll blast him out. You know, Mr. Drysdale, on second thought, maybe it'd be safer for everybody if I did run for smoke, Commissioner. Wonderful. I better run for granny. <laughs> I'm back, and we got this election in the bag. Now, take it easy. The only reason I'm doing this is to save Granny from Beverly Hills and Beverly Hills from Granny. Well, wait till you see what I got for the campaign. You're going to be a shoe-in whether you like it or not. Well, the only thing that matters is keeping Granny's mind off her shotgun. Thank goodness it seems to be doing that. Jed? I'm ready to go. Granny, I thought we were going to win this feud with votes. We are. But this is for them that ain't got a clear view of the issue. It stays here. I'm getting my votes like every other politician. You mean we're gonna buy them? No, but Jethro's got a dandy idea for drawing a crowd, and we're oh, gonna... Oh, Jeff, here's your campaign manager with the posters, hot off the press. Let's take a look. Jethro Bodine says, vote for Jed Clamp. What kind of election poster is that? Well, that's the only picture I could find. Are well, you gonna toot in the wrong horn? Well, what you mean? Well, shouldn't my name be at the top? <laughs> oh, I got one of them, too. Vote for Jed Clampett for Smog Commission. <laughs> Jethro Bodine, campaign manager. Some old printer run out of room. <laughs> well, uh, we'll save these for later. What you got in the sack? Hamburgers. Can't you get your mind off on food and onto this election? Food. <laughs> Ain't that something? And under the meat is wrote, Jethro Bodine, campaign manager. You want to see it? I don't think so. Uh, let's get downtown and drum up some votes. Okay, I got everything we'll need. Really, Chief, don't you think it's about time you started going to a barber shop for your haircuts? Oh, what's wrong with this? I save the 250 and give you the tip. Yes, 15 cents. Ah, don't forget the nickel I give you for the shoe shine. <laughs> Sideburns a little longer this time. I feel kind of sporty after solving. A major crisis like the Clampets. You have not solved it. You have merely postponed it. Oh, no. By election day, Granny will be sick of the whole issue and glad to forget about blowing up the county building. Yes, but what about Mr. Clampett? He thinks he's running for small commissioner. Oh, so they put up a poster or two. At least they're staying out of trouble. Well, I think it's the wrong way to handle the matter. Miss I Hathaway, can't... I can't stand a barber who talks all the time. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful day. It's a band concert in the park across the street. Wait a minute. What park? <laughs> what band? Excuse me, Uncle Jed. That folks and neighbors just ain't got no class. Uh, you give me a little while, I'll write you a real speech. <laughs> Mr. Clapper, what are you doing? Well, we're campaigning, Mr. Drysdale. Gee, I hope we didn't interrupt your lunch. Boy, you sure must be a sloppy eater. <laughs> we heard you playing and came right down. We're drumming up a crowd so Jed can say a speech. And it's heartwarming to see how the people's ready to support me. They are? Why, every time we play. Folks try to drop money in my tambourine. But we don't need it. Jed stands ready to sink all of his $62 million in this campaign. All right. We've got to get them off the street. They'll be arrested. Well, perhaps if we suggested a campaign rally. Good idea. Mr. Clampett, you ought to start your campaign with a rally. You know, a speaker stand, flags, crowds, the works. Well, all right, Mr. Drysdale, if you don't mind us stopping traffic along here. Oh, not here! At, 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 at your house, to, to show them you're a homeowner and a family man. Yes, and that sounds like a good idea, Uncle Jed. Uh, I'm his campaign manager. <laughs> yeah, that might be fun at that. Well, uh, don't you worry about Mr. Drysdale. We'll take care of everything. You just go back to your spaghetti or whatever it was you was about to eat. Bye! 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 Bye. 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 This is... Now this you is... run along. There ain't nothing worse than cold spaghetti. <laughs> I have a rally, Paul. It's afternoon, Ellie. I'll get some sheets to hang on the side of the tank. I, I mean the trucks. 
and Jethro can print on them. Well, Ellie can do that, Granny. I just thought of a way to tell the whole city about the rally on one poster. One poster? Where are you going to put it? Up there. I'm going to sky ride it. <laughs> Hold this, Uncle Jeff. Frightened in the sky. I think the boy's been blowing oompahs on this thing too long. I don't think it's a blow on so much, Granny, is trying to get them heard through these hamburgers. Three hamburgers, everybody. everybody That's just dandy, child. Well, I want to be all done it before Paul gets back. Ellie, go on in the house. Here comes the smog commissioner. Well, I'll help you fight. No, 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 it's all in. Maybe I can talk him into throwing, I mean, conceiving the race a little early. <laughs> well, if it ain't the nice Commissioner Tinsley. Now, see here, little lady. Oh, I'm awful sorry about this morning, but I, I want to talk to you about the election. Oh, that's why I've come up to this zoo again. <laughs> I've heard that Mr. Clampett is running. And I want to tell him that it hasn't changed my position on soap making one bit. Well, uh, Jed's out back. Well, then you tell him. He's wasting his time. Oh, now, don't yell at Granny. Oh, I'm sure you have a nice little old mama just like me somewhere. Hardly. <laughs> Your gorilla escaped. Oh, oh, that's Jethro, my grandnephew's invention. He's a genius, you know. Has a lot of levers and such. All rigged up so we can drive it from in there. Really? Take a look. It's fascinating. Where does your dear old mama live, Mr. Commissioner? Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, my. And how long has it been since you've seen her dear, sweet face? It's been over a year. Oh, that long. How would you like to take a trip to Iowa and visit her till after the election? What? <laughs> Rally today. So that's it, eh? Thought you'd get some publicity at my expense. Well, it won't work. <laughs> and as soon as I defeat you at the polls, I'll get the smog control to raid this place. <laughs> Granny, you shouldn't have done that. It was for his dear, sweet mama. She'd have been so happy. <laughs> How pretty! Look! Jethro's putting Paul's name in the sky. <laughs> King, if he ain't riding in the sky, just like he said, with the airplane trailing smoke. That's a poster you can't miss. There's your name, Jed. J E T. That <laughs> cluck. He ain't never going to get to your name. He's doing good if he finishes a picture. <laughs> What do you see, Chief? Just some skywriting plane spelling out J-E-T-H. It's probably some new diet drink. Oh, let me see. No, forget it. You've got a big problem on your hands. I? Getting me out of the mess I'm in. How could I know that Jed Clamett was actually going to campaign? Well, as long as he is, why not try to shape him into a somewhat acceptable candidate? Are you kidding? He's not political material. He's honest, straightforward, trustworthy. What kind of a politician would that make? <laughs> and he has no sophistication. He's just a rail splitter, born in a log cabin. Isn't his similarity to Lincoln amazing? <laughs> Who? <laughs> the man on the $5 bill. Oh, yeah, Lincoln! <laughs> what about him? I was just saying that Mr. Clavitt has a great deal in common with him. Yes, he has. See, I wonder if with the right public relations... Oh, oh, Chief, I didn't mean... No, wait, just... you hit on something. We can play up the log cabin, the rail splitting, the honesty bit. Oh, what a campaign! For a small commissioner? Oh, that's <laughs> only the beginning. With this gimmick, there's no telling how far he can go. Mayor, state senate, governor's mansion. Chief. From there, it's only a hop to the White House. <laughs> Honest Jed Clampett, president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be right there beside him. Secretary of the Treasury. The Mint is my playground. A summer home at Fort Knox. Lie down. 
Let me put this bag of silver dollars on your forehead. <laughs> well, I reckon we better forget about having the rally today. Yeah. We ain't gonna get no big crowds with that. <laughs> Yeah, but I was lost without an eraser. <laughs> Don't nobody say nothing. Now, hold on, boy. You done your best. Dumb old pilot. You weren't no help spelling at all. Couldn't draw on either. Don't take it so hard. We'll have that rally. Yeah, but I was all ready for it today. Done got a speech wrote up for you and everything. Ellie Mae, go and see, can you cheer him up? Yes, sir, Paul. <laughs> Let's hear the speech, Jed. All right. Looks like a dandy. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ring. Got a nice ring to it. Yeah, the boy ain't much good at drawing, but he sure can write good. Read the part about making my soap. All right, here it is. To make soap or not to make soap? That is the question. <laughs> Mr. President. Chief, remember, small commissioner first. Uh, did you have your rally? Well, uh, we wanted to, but nobody got the word. Oh, what happened? There may thunderclouds up there. Well, we're going to have it. Jeff, it'll be heartbroken if we don't. Mr. Clampett, you're going to be on television. We've arranged for a great debate with Tinsley. Well, good. I got a dandy speech here. No, no. no. This is a debate, and I know just how we can nail it. I had him nailed in the back of the truck. Uh, what were you saying, Mr. Dredge? Anti-smog devices. During Commissioner Tinsley's three years in office, he failed to come up with a single device to eliminate contaminants from automobile exhausts. Well, I hope that ain't part of the job. I couldn't build one either. No, no, no. I meant... I bet Jethro could. Yeah, I'm gonna put him on that. He's a genius when it comes to inventing things. Good, good. Well, I'll pick you up tomorrow for the debate. Oh, and I have some things in the car for you. Help me, Miss Hathaway. I hope you get to say your speech. So do I. Listen to this. Soap by any other name would smell as sweet. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Jed, it's almost time to go to the TV studio. We're all ready to go. Well, you've been primping them long enough. Granny, may I present the next small commissioner of the county of Beverly Hills? <laughs> ah, wonderful. All we need now is a beard. Drysdale, I don't want to wear this. I'll get it. But you must. It's all a part of the campaign. How do you do, Granny? Ah, it's the small boomer. Everybody out back. We gotta protect the soap. Keep the old fire burning. <laughs> What is this? I just came over to offer Mr. Clampett one last chance before the debate to withdraw from the race. Running scared, eh? Now that you're up against Honest Jed, I ain't gonna do it. I don't care if it costs me the election, I can't try to be somebody I ain't. But Uncle Jed, we got the election in the bag. I done invented a small device small enough to fit on any car. What? I never saw one that small. Why, that's amazing. I tested it. It works. This is without my device, and this here is with it. Filling it completely. What a breakthrough. I'll pull the truck up front and demonstrate it for you. We'll make a fortune. Now, wait, Mr. Drysdale. If it's good for folks, we'll want to give it to the country. Yeah? Well, that's wonderful. In return, I'll allow Granny to make her soap. What are you talking about? Mr. Crap is going to be the new small commissioner. Oh, no, Mr. Drysdale. If Mr. Tinsley will allow Granny to make her soap, he's got my vote. No! I never cared about running no house. It's a deal, then. Okay, Mr. Tinsley, ready to put my device on the truck. Ah, you're a genius. Building a workable device this small. Oh, the device weren't nothing. The real problem was making the filter. Filter? <laughs> That's the filter? Yeah, you ought to see it before I got it down to size. Great Scott. And you ought to hear the speech he wrote. <laughs> Four score and seven years <laughs> But now 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmwise presentation.